Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another Arcade's voice acting. As you know, I'm very new at this. Part of being new means I get to be blown away while doing research on voice actors. This one blew me away. Michael Bell blew me away. While doing research, I discovered he did voice work for a character that had a lot of impact on me in the past. Therefore, I am glad to present him to you today. Michael Bell was born July 30, 1938 in Brooklyn, New York City. He mentioned that he was addicted to showing off when he was around 5 years old and would sing for pennies at his local market. That addiction turned into determination when he got older and decided to become an actor. From 1956 to 1971, he did on-screen acting, with a brief three and a half years in the military early in his career. Then in 1972, he started doing voice work in parallel to on-screen acting. In an interview with Realistic Videos, he mentioned that he stopped doing screen acting when shooting a scene in the 80s where he was chasing someone with a weapon in hand. The director said cut and asked Michael what he was doing with his hand. Michael replied, I'm holding the gun. The director said, your other hand. And Michael answered, it's on my forehead because the wind is blowing and I don't want anybody to see that I'm balding. That's when he told himself he couldn't do on-screen acting anymore and would focus on voice acting. Overall, Michael has an amazing curriculum. In the 70s and 80s, his earlier roles included Stutz and Raven from Houndcats, Ernie Devlin from the show Devlin, and both Zan and Gleek from various iterations of their Wonder Twins from the 70s to the 2000s. He did four characters on the show I watched relentlessly as a kid, the Smurfs, voicing Grouchy Smurf, Handy Smurf, Lazy Smurf, and Chohan. He was the voice of Bruce Banner in 1982's The Incredible Hulk, and on the show Voltron he was the voice of Lance and Sven. But for us Transformers fanatics, he'll be remembered for his iconic contribution to the original show. You may know him for his portrayal of the tactician Prowl, <laughs> well, you sure had me execute a fantastic move, Chip. The warrior sideswipe. It's cold enough to freeze the ailerons off for a titanium moose buff. Swoop of the Dinobots. Soon other Dinobots captured. Let me get away. Constructicon's scrapper. As you order, Master Megatron. And the Insecticon not Cyclonus to be bombshell. This is child's play compared to Decepticon transform circuits. He's also the voice of first aid. I don't fit in with the rest of you. I'm I'm not a fighter. I'm leaving. Brainstorm. Human partners, highbrow! The problem is where they would inhabit us when we're in robot form! Dr. Fujiyama. To God my latest invention when I present it to the world. And Possum Brown. I never seen such a fuss, all on account of a few thousand gallons of gas. What most people will remember him for is, of course, his Yo Joe! on the opening credit of G.I. Joe, a real American hero. On that show, he's the voice of Duke, Xamut, Major Blood, Lift Ticket, Clutch, Scrap Iron, Blowtorch, Tollboot, Dr. Vandermeer, and Socrates Ertes. I've totally butchered that, and I apologize. From there, the extent of his work is too large to list at all. He's credited for 310 roles from 146 titles on BehindTheVoiceActors.com. Therefore, I'll give you my list of favorite voice from his various TV shows, video games, and a couple on-screen appearances. His most impressive voice contribution is playing 53 characters on Rugrats, most notably Drew Pickles and Chaz Finster. That's a lot of voices for one man. But I think what caught my attention the most is realizing he's been the voice of many characters of several of my favorite video game franchise. Aside from reprising the roles of Sideswipe and Scrapper in Transformers Devastation, he portrayed Patriarch, an antagonist in the second episode of the Xeno Saga trilogy. If you haven't played this, you missed out. He's also the voice of Medivh, known as the Prophet or Oracle from Warcraft 3. He is the voice of Herdalus, a recruitable character from Baldur's Gate 2. 
This series is where I spent a quarter of my life and I consider it to be the best RPG ever made. I'll fight you on that. Finally, and I can't believe I never knew this, is Raziel from the Legacy of Kane franchise. Yes, the same franchise that inspired my moniker and most of my gamer tags. I mean, this series had the best stories, amazing voice talent, and even Michael once commented that it was one of the best written script he had ever read. I guess I should have paid more attention to who was doing the voices back then. Then you know what I am, and who you are. I believe I do. And still you think you can move me about like your pawn? Think again, Cain. Take heed, Raziel. Another thing that surprised me was some of his on-screen role. Most important role for me, he's Zorn from the very first episode of Star Trek's The Next Generation Encounter at Four Point. He's been involved in the original Star Trek, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and also contributed to several Star Trek video games. This is another thing that blew me away because I've spent most of my teenagehood watching Star Trek, any continuity, and I absolutely adore this franchise. Outside of Star Trek, Michael guest starred on many shows like MASH, Three's Company and Charlie's Angel. I'm telling you, he's been a fun actor to research. I found myself reminiscing about my countless hours playing my favorite video games. I never know what I'll find when I start a project, and I truly hope I'll never stop being surprised. Listening to the many interviews I found about Michael, when he's asked about what drew him into a specific show or a role, his answer is often, it was a job. Well, let me tell you that what's a job to him was a great childhood for me, and hopefully you. Check out the links in the description for some interviews with him. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Michael Bell's career. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care.